L'chaim in Jewish, yeah. to your health, to life. So, what's the next beef? Mr. Guthrie, oh, are you ready friend. for the next one? Yeah. I figured you would be. Okay. How about we do a little bit of... What do we normally do on the grill in the summertime? Ribs. How about some barbecue ribs? Oh, I love ribs. All right. I love barbecue ribs. You know, because I have the whole cow. I got to use the whole cow. I make it from the neck bone. I make the stew. The shank bone, I make the asubuco. The ribs, we hit the barbecue. It's all oh, good. Oh. It's all good. We get them trimmed in the butcher shop. We have our own facility, by the way. Oh, we have every, yeah, we control, we control the process literally from the farm to the plate. We grow the cattle, we bring the cattle, our, our staff brings the cattle our way from the ranch to the facility. The cattle are processed and harvested, slaughtered under our supervision. Uh, then they are, of course, like I said, I dry age them, I supervise the dry aging. And then the days that, they're proce that we're processing these beef, once they're ready, in the cutting room, they're cut and they're, and they're processed to our specifications exactly. Ooh. All right. And so packaging you're a as control well. freak, but yeah. a good one. This well, is a good, this is a good I, way I, to do I, it I, with I, the beef. I believe, in, I believe that if I'm going to guarantee my steak to you and my beef to you, I have to know every step of where this yeah, meat came I agree. From. That's great. If I tell you that I watch this beef and we control this beef, I don't want to just make that an empty sentence. Yes. And so we actually control the whole process from the farm to the plate. These are our fresh ribs. Ooh. They need to be trimmed. Oh, we trim. You don't need a lot of this fat on them. I like the fat on them while it's aging because it protects the meat. As the beef ages, the outer layers of the beef start to rot, which is the aging process. Oh. And they get mold on them, so they get trimmed away. So the more protection you have over the meat, the, more, the less meat you'll lose. Oh, okay. okay. So what we're going to do now is that we are going to cut off because we don't need a lot of this, a lot of this fat on here. Actually, we'll just use this one here, and this will just come off easily. And we'll leave a little bit on for flavor. So that's protecting. This is protection, yeah. correct. That's protection. This is protection. Because the, one of the first parts to go sour on the meat is the fat. Mm -hmm. And if the fat goes bad, the meat goes bad. Okay. Okay. So we will cut again. We'll cut this part out. I'm going to cut some of this fat off here that we don't need. I like to keep some of the fat on because it, it will melt off on the grill. And it'll also come off in the process. Now, some people would disagree with me. They say if you slow roast it long enough, you don't need to uh, boil it. But I personally like to make the meat tender. So I boil water after I, trim, after I have trimmed the fat off. And into a pot of water, it goes for only about 10 minutes, not even. I would put the meat, now that the meat's done, I don't season it yet, into our boiling water, and... Press the center. Press the center, oh, here it is. No, no. Okay, so. show me how to work this, there we go. Oh, all right, there you go, bring it right back up, we wanna bring it back to a boil. So that's boiling that's doesn't hurt the meat. Not really, no. Uh -huh. I mean, that's, you know, you know, it's uh, there's a different school. You overboil. Uh -huh. Thank you. And that's just good. So what I like to I like to boil it because a lot of times it, you don't have the six or seven hours that you're going to slow roast yeah. it. Okay. We're gonna we don't have that kind of time and luxury. So what happens is we I boil it for a little bit, and then I'll put it in the back in the pan. And then I'll put it in the oven. Okay. Okay, I'll put it in the oven. And what will happen is, after about... Now uh, these are ribs that have been boiled. This has been boiled. Okay. Then put in the oven at 275 degrees okay. for about two hours. Okay. Okay, and what that does 
is it tenderizes, it lifts the meat off, and actually I like to get it because it gets you prepared to put on the grill because I don't want to burn the meat. All I want to do when it's on the grill is I want to get the barbecue flavor in it and the seasoning flavor that I'm going to put in it. And what we're going to do today is we're going to make a little teriyaki glaze, Ooh. honey glaze for the barbecue sauce. So we're going to start with your natural free range honey. We don't need a lot of that. And I just like to measure by measuring. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna put a little organic teriyaki. Yeah, yeah. so that's teriyaki range. sauce. That's the organic. We're so. staying on track. Yeah, we were staying on our track. That's good. We'll put a little teriyaki sauce in there. All right. We're gonna add a little bit of white balsamic vinegar. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I smell that. Oh, yeah. All right. Basically, I do it just to look because yeah. basically you're going to mix it up and you're going to brush it on. And I have two other things that I like to use. I have a very a raspberry vinegar. Ooh, okay. And I use a sweet soy sauce. You'll notice I didn't put any salt on there. Right. Because all these ingredients have salt, salt in them. There. And there's enough salt there. Shake up the little raspberry vinaigrette. Just a little bit of dab will do you there. And we'll mix it up. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do to it now is take a whiff of that. Ooh, boy, that smells good. Smells good, huh? Yep, I'm going to taste it. Here. There you go. Oh. Is that good? Oh, yeah, is that that's good? good. It's not uh, too sweet. The only thing that I didn't add to it, uh, the only thing I didn't add to it, which I saved from the last one, was the garlic. Right. Ooh, that's good. <coughs> and then we're just gonna, we're just gonna brush it on easy and at, to get it going. And then when it's on the grill, every time I turn it, Put I brush it, it again. Yeah. All right. Now our ribs are ready to go on the grill. So. We're down to the last cut there, my Oh. Friend. Hey, this is, you know what? So uh, So what? we've been building up. This is like a, each a, one. Actually, we got, we have one more special reserve present that I brought you. Mm-hmm. My special aged filet mignon. Oh. Or if it's in a big piece like that, they call it the Chateau Brion. Oh, okay. This is the filet we're going to put on the grill, and you're going to enjoy that. That, I don't have to do anything to, because if you do anything to a filet, you should be shot. A filet <laughs> needs nothing, absolutely nothing, but maybe a little Bernays sauce when it's done. What do we have here? We have a very regular, we have a, I brought you a, a New York strip. Okay. We're gonna taste the New York strip. We don't have to touch it. On a New York strip, all we do is we dab the juice off. We put a little bit of salt. That's all you need pepper I put on the grill, mm -hmm. and this is sirloin steak. Ooh. Same thing. Dab it off. This is dry aged 14 days. This is, you know, a little bit of aging that I do. Ooh, man, that smells good. Again, smells this is the good. same cow that this came from, that this came mm -hmm. from, that this came from, that and the hamburgers hamburger came from. from. So we this one cow has been going a long this one way. Cow, <laughs> this one cow has had his run. What do you say we hit the grill? Yep, sounds good All to right. me. Sounds good to me. This is what grilling is all about. Oh, yeah. Florida style. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You know, I love it when I have people 
that are hesitant because they only eat a certain kind of meat. And I know I have it. And then when they try it, they know it's real.